Hi, welcome to Project Geospatial. I'm Adam Simmons, and here with me is John Nelson. John Nelson. I can't believe I messed that up early. Um, He's part of the Esri content team. John, if you can give me a brief introduction of who you are, what you do for Esri, and uh, we'll get started on today's topic. Yeah, sure. Thanks, Adam. Well, first of all, thanks for the kind invitation. Uh, It's always a lot of fun to talk map nerd stuff with other map nerds, um, particularly when even more map nerds are listening. So we'll see how that goes. Um, Yes, I work on Esri's content team, and in particular on the Living Atlas team. So Esri has a thing called the Living Atlas of the World, and it's a little bit like a wiki-like thing where people can upload their data if they want us to host it and disseminate it to folks. Um, It's all vetted by human beings and reviewed and then kind of marked as authoritative um, so that people can trust it. And it's just a library that we'll also contribute to as well, and we've got relationships with different um, scientific institutions and governments. And so they'll host their data there. So it's just a good place to keep your data. And it's, I mean, it's bursting with data, of course. And one of the things that I get to do is just surf around in that data and think up ways to make use of it, to visualize it, to use our tools in weird and absurd and unsanctioned ways to get some insights from that data. Great. Um, now, what brought me to you today is there you you had an interesting post uh, regarding hospital beds and visualizing hospital beds uh, within uh, well on the map. And there's a conversation on how that evolved too. Can you tell us a little bit more about that uh, blog post, uh, mapping hospital beds, where the data comes from, how you did it, etc. Yeah, sure. So. I was talking with Esri's chief medical officer, who is just a wonderful person, Esti Guerretti, and she showed me this hospital bed point data that had just been recently shared. Um, And I can, let me, let me pull up a link to that real quick. So let me switch that screen sharing while you're doing that. Okay. Actually, it happens to be in Living Atlas, but let me see here. So hospital beds, definitive healthcare. So definitive healthcare released this amazing data. It's point-based data of hospitals in the United States and associated with each of those hospitals is a count of hospital beds. So it'll say what hospital type it is, whether it's a VA hospital or acute care, long-term, short-term, that kind of thing. And the number of hospital beds that it's licensed for, like how many beds are on the premises, how many beds that in typical times they're staffed to manage and provide care for and how many ICU beds they have. So it's, it's a remarkable data set. And I was looking at it and it's, um, it's points. And I was zooming in, you know, of course we all zoom into our neighborhood and see what the situation looks like on the ground for us. And I was thinking like, how can, how can a person use this for planning purposes? And uh, I was looking around and I thought, it would be nice if I could have some some takeaway nuggets of information in an aggregated sense. And I was like, well, what kind of aggregation scheme could I use? Because we've got, you know, this hospital, which uh, Sparrow Hospital, my hometown hospital, um, and the number of beds that they've got. But how does that compare to the population around it, right? Is, is that enough beds? What is enough beds? Uh, how does that compare to other areas? And so initially I had created a hexagonal tessellation that fishnet covered the whole United States. And I aggregated the number of hospital beds up into those hexagons. And I was showing this to Esti and she said, well, this is, this is really interesting, but she was looking at the cities and she said, there's just so many hospital beds in each one of those cities. Is there a more equitable way to break this out? And I was like, Oh yeah, this is pretty interesting. Um, And so Initially, my thought was, well, let's let's scrap the politically neutral hexagons, which normally I love to use politically neutral shapes in geographic aggregation because political shapes can be so arbitrary and a lot of the times meaningless or misleading when you're uh, applying it to a certain phenomenon, but not necessarily hospitals and hospital beds. State and local governments obviously care a lot about counties and what county a hospital bed happens to be in. So I thought, let's go with counties. It's also pretty convenient because I have a wealth of uh, demographic data associated with counties. Um, And so my initial map was um, rolling up all the hospital beds 
into counties. And of course, you know, as I want to do, I made a story map where I say, here's all the hospitals in the United States, and here they are uh, scaled by the number of hospital beds that they have. And if every hospital was to fully scale up to the number of licensed beds that they have on premise, if that's possible, here's what that would look like. And I was looking at something that was essentially a, a de facto population map, right? I mean, any geographer would look at this and go, okay, here we go, another population map. And then they would all email me that XKCD heat map comic uh, <laughs> where everything was associated with a population density map. Um, and so in order to avoid the uh, inevitable XKCD barrage, I aggregated those into counties and created a proportion of people per bed. So in each county, it's color coded by how many residents there are associated with one bed in that county. Uh, and then really all I did was just start pairing it back bit by bit by bit until we got into the most extreme counties that had uh, a pretty scary ratio of population to number of hospital beds. And then lastly, my filter was to only show counties with a population of 100,000 or more just to give a sense of the magnitude in, in addition to, the, to that kind of scary ratio. Now this this tells a real powerful story here, just with the data alone. Um, even even though you're just aggregating uh, the hospital beds to counties, uh, how often is the hospital bed data set updated? Well, it looks like this hospital bed data is updated pretty frequently because I was looking at the meta. So I was working with a version that I had downloaded about a week ago. And then when I was working with it, I saw they had updated it a few days after that. And so it looks like it's being updated, especially these days. Um, it, it's not terribly stale, I'll say. It's not, not, not necessarily a live feed, but it's updated pretty frequently. And okay. honestly, I don't know how often hospital beds really kind of change hospitals, but I do know that the staffing number probably would increase dramatically in days like this. But I mean, I should qualify everything that I say with, I am not a doctor and I'm not a healthcare professional and uh, I'm just barely a healthy person. And so I, I rely a, a lot on what SD has to tell me. And uh, she gave me some really good advice to help me put this kind of thing together. Um, and just to go back in your Twitter feed just a second. Do you got you got this idea initially from uh, Alex Hill on Twitter? Twitter from from, uh, from using the uh, Craigslist, which yeah. is the next uh, scenario, right? Yeah, sure. So this was county based, and you know I associated it with pre existing attributes of health and age and food accessibility and stuff like that, just to put that data into context. And I shared it out, and then yes, Alex Hill said, you know what. It would actually be better if you used your Craigslist zones for something like this. And I was like, ah, I know, I know. Because I thought of I thought of using that and I thought, well, it's it's nice to and I'm still glad I did this for counties. Um, because it's nice for people to know they know what county they live in. And so they can dive in and see their county and, and figure out the ratio of people to beds. But there's just something really interesting about using Craigslist zones to roll this hospital bed data up into. And so um, I did that and it was, it's super simple. Uh, I, I, I don't know if you can see it, but I, I tweeted Alex back and I said, yes, you can totally do it. Um, I'll do it right now. And then I did it, I shared the data and I wrote a blog post kind of documenting the process for how to do it. And it's, you know, it's like a five minute job and it was just done in a browser too. So doing a, a spatial intersection of Craigslist zones to hospitals, summing up each hospital bed type per Craigslist zone. But probably everybody's wondering what the heck a Craigslist zone is, I would imagine. That's a good question. And 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 the next follow on, if you can ask that uh, answer this too, is uh, what makes Craigslist zones more interesting or just as interesting than counties? Yeah, yeah, certainly. They're different. They're different things. Um, they weren't carved up by legislators in the 1850s, you know. Um, they don't have wildly different areas and um, unnaturally rigid geographic straight borders like counties do. They're more of a natural phenomenon. And by natural, I mean, they're a real life proxy for how 
person to person business is done in the United States. Um, so I'm showing you right now. I don't know if you can see my screen. Yep. A blog post I did where I where I generated these Craigslist zones. Uh, I've also in the past called them the United States of Craigslist. Um, based on drive time distances from the named locations within a Craigslist site. So um, craigslist.org, it's uh, where you go to buy and sell stuff in your community. And there's a really interesting concept that comes along with that. Okay, community, that's that's interesting. And it's uh, separated enough that, you know, if I want to buy uh, a kayak, how far am I willing to drive to go get a kayak or how far am I going to drive to get a, a, a straw bale for the garden, that kind of thing. And so you get these really realistic, very pragmatic economic zones that start growing. And Craigslist doesn't have shapes. Right? Craigslist only has uh, website domains, so URLs that you can go to. When I go to craigslist.org, it immediately redirects me based on my IP address to the Lansing version of craigslist.org, right? So the Lansing local site of Craigslist. And it does that based on some kind of uh, proximity rules that they have, which frankly, I don't know. I don't know what those are. Those are a mystery to me and probably everybody, except for the person who programmed it. Although I will say the first time I made a Craigslist map, one of the developers from Craigslist emailed me and said, this is kind of how we do it. You're on the right track. So that was, that was promising. So anyways, these are geographic re regions where people tend to do business. These are the, the ad hoc transaction zones of people uh, meeting face to face, traveling a certain distance. Um, and I thought this is, I agreed with Alex, this is a really good fit for um, understanding the count and the location of hospital beds. Where's a hospital bed? How many hospital beds are in this economic area? Um, the cool thing about having these geographic economic areas is you can start enriching them with all kinds of interesting census data. So I could say, show me the proportion of a senior population in each of these areas. Show me the average income. Show me the proportion of people who are likely to face food insecurity issues. John, you're about to go into details about your Craigslist zone maps. Can you, yeah. can you do that? Yeah, sure. So the story behind it was about, about, gosh, 10 years ago, I was looking at uh, this series of maps that a researcher had made uh, with where's george.com data. Do you remember, do you know where's george.com? It, it vaguely sounds familiar. Yeah, it was, it's pretty hot in the early 2000s. Um, and it's still, it's still live and kicking. So where's George, you'd, you'd get a dollar bill and you'd, you'd stamp it and say, register me on where's george.com. And you'd, you'd write down the serial number and you'd say what your zip code is where you uh, had that dollar bill. And then it just enters circulation. And then the next person to register that location, you know, they, they start tracking this and it shows, oh, cool. This dollar bill was in, you know, Gatlinburg, Tennessee, and then Gainesville, Florida. And yes, before that, I do was, remember that. I saw dollar bills stamped with that all the time back in the day. Yeah. Yeah. I don't quite see them as often anymore. Maybe, maybe like because I just up. never see money anymore. <laughs> yeah. uh, and the researchers had made some, the researcher was actually Dirk Brockman. He's a, a, a German researcher, like a astrophysicist or something. And he, he wanted to understand the connection of human transportation networks and systems with the spread of that virus. And he determined that there was a connection. And then he stumbled upon this, where's George data and thought, okay, the transaction of a dollar bill is a nice proxy for how far people travel. And so he did this study that, um, was like this, this stochastic model. So it'd run over and over and over and over again. And it would segment the United States into these geographic zones where the dollar bill, a dollar bill is likely to stay. So like transactional neighborhoods. Okay. Uh, and it was really fascinating. And um, I was looking at that map and uh, a person I was working with at a, a previous company named Ian Clemens said, I wonder if we can do something like this with uh, Craigslist site data. And I was like, well, oh, that's interesting. And so we went for it. And so you take Craigslist's 
uh, sites, and they list them on their website. So craigslist.org slash sites, I think it is. And you can grab all the named locations of their sites. And some of the sites have like two cities, three cities, you know. Um, and some of their sites are really vague, like, I don't know, Western Iowa, that kind of thing. And so it kind of represented a lot of manual work. So I geocoded the cities that I could. And then I kind of um, drew a fuzzy area around the places that were named in a fuzzy way. And then I ran a, a Voronoi or a Thiessen polygon generation on top of those to, to create areas. Um, geographers call it Thiessen, but I, I think Voronoi predates it. Okay. Um, so it's just like, here's a dot, here's a dot, here's a dot. And then it draws uh, a polygon around each dot so that you've got these little territories, right? It's a territory building tool based on a seed input. Um, and then I just ran a dissolve based on the, the named cities that were in the same Craigslist site, that kind of thing. And so you get this basic map of the United States of Craigslist. So uh, it, where the rubber meets the road, economists... Uh, map of the United States. Um, and I always wanted to make it a little bit more realistic because that kind of method is pretty simple in that there's two points. It'll draw a boundary line exactly between those two points. But you live near DC, so you know that, you know, traveling doesn't happen as the crow flies. You have to take traffic into account and the road system. And no, so unfortunately all of our roads are built off of uh, old Indian trails and uh, just old trails in general, really. <laughs> And just so many people who want to drive on them. Lots of traffic. And so people take that into account. Um, and so what I what I did was, instead of just doing a simple Thiessen polygon or Voronoi, you know, sectioning of it, I ran a drive time system from each of those locations. So I grew out from those locations drive time zones. So it's not necessarily exactly right in between 50-50 each point. It's how far will a car get if they're traveling at the same general rate on this road system where they meet? And then that's the border. So the drive time based Craigslist zones are much more realistic and practical zoning of the United States. And those are the ones that I ended up rolling the hospital bed data into. Now there's a ton of uh, use cases beyond just what you've done for visualization. You just open the aperture with displaying and visualizing it. And obviously we're not health experts with that said, but sure. how is the, uh, a lot of potential applications such, such as, you know, can I um, type in my address and look for the closest one that might have the most beds available, you know, that type of thing. So maybe I'm more likely to get seen if I have a certain condition. You know, I, that, once yeah. again, hypothetically, I can see apps like that work working with the medical community. Yeah. And like you said, for me, it's all hypothetical. Um, I just chat with our our uh, medical person once in a while just to make sure I'm on the right track. And she told me that in all of her conversations that she's having right now, it's not about hospitals. It's about hospital beds. And so any way to present hospital bed data in a, in a geographic fashion um, may be useful to someone. And yeah. this is something that maybe uh, somebody in the healthcare industry can see this and say, ah, okay, I can use this to do X or Y, or I can show this to my science team and, or marketing team or transportation team, and we can do something with this. Um, maybe a, a local representative, uh, can see this and, and say, oh, is there any way we can aggregate up the demographics for this Craigslist zone and compare that to the number of hospital beds that are available and see if we can deduce anything. So what I'm, what I'm trying to do is just push out a lot of tools for discovery and tools for possible use. And like I said, I'm, I'm not a doctor and I'm not using these tools myself. I'm a geographer and a map person, and I'm trying to create geographic products that may be useful to somebody who's uh, waging this war right now. So beyond the blog post, the map itself of the hospital beds on Craigslist Zone is published and people can look through it right now, correct? Oh, yeah. Yeah, it is. Uh, I Maybe you can share a link to it. Um, I can share a link with you right now to the 
Yeah, so I'll, I'll, uh, we'll share all the links that we're talking about within the show notes. And, and, and this means that the data is open to use and reuse uh, and aggregate even more creative uh, applications to, correct? Yeah, have at it. Yeah, go for it. So the, the hospital bed data is available. The Craigslist zone data is available. And this intersection of the two where I've aggregated the hospital beds into the Craigslist zone, that's available. Um, additionally, the county level aggregation that I did is available too. I can send you a link to that. So I'm just hopeful that perhaps something like this, if not directly useful to somebody uh, working in, in the healthcare industry could get their ideas flowing. So somebody who's not necessarily GIS focused can look at this and say, okay, this reminds me we can do something like this. And then they can talk with their with their technical team to hopefully derive something that is what, useful to them. Are you inspired to do any additional uh, work and seeing how this evolves further? Yeah. So I'm working with somebody on our um, business analyst team, Kyle Watson, and I reached out to him and I said, I'm working on creating zones based on hospital beds. Is there any way that you have a tool uh, because it's a, a business set of tools, can you grow a territory based on point locations? He's like, yeah, of course, that's bread and butter of what we do. And so he and I have been working together on this and he's been taking this hospital bed data and running some models saying, show me a regionalization of the United States where each zone contains the same number of hospital beds, say a thousand hospital beds. And so the result then is essentially a United States of hospital beds um, map, which I actually had up a second. Oh, you know what? I was working on it before you called and it's this. I don't know if you can see it. Yes, we can. So it's just really new, very fresh um, regionalization of the United States based on equal number of hospital beds. Um, so just one more way of creating growing territories around um, the commodity of hospital beds. So uh, I'm hearing right now that, I mean, in addition to ventilators, hospital beds themselves are uh, the proxy of the currency of treating this, this uh, disease. Now, once again, this is a fascinating use case for visualizing hospital beds. But but on the other hand, you know, adding to it, you know, uh, this is a use case for understanding how supply chain uh, can be analyzed on a country at scale for uh, for for where people need it most. Um, and so overlaying data such as the uh, where people the current infection rates that you guys have going through the uh, Esri GIS hub might be useful too. Correct. I would think so. Uh, if if somebody who knows a lot more about this than I do looks at this and says, okay, show me all of the 3M distribution hubs within each of these locations or show me all of my um, facilities, warehouses within these locations and their proximity to to the territory, then that's great. No, awesome. Now, uh, John, before I uh, wrap up with you here a little bit, I want to ask, do you have any other plugs for how you see this type of applied use of the data uh, evolving for other people, ideas? Um, and what's your opinion of current maps out there that exist that are displaying, you know, the uh, progression of the coronavirus? Well, there's so many. It's almost like... Um, like an election season where during the election season, uh, all the, the visual staff from every newspaper is all geared up and they've got all these plans for how they're best going to visualize it and trump the other newspaper. Um, it's, it's a little bit like that, but of course it's more altruistic. I suppose it's, it's less competitive and everybody just trying to, to paint the most straightforward, best, most useful picture possible. Cause I mean, we're all in this together, right? This isn't like, uh, I mean, Politics is serious, but this is us wondering where it's coming next. Is it approaching the neighborhood where my 79-year-old father with breathing issues lives, which is my concern right now. Um, and so I'm doing what I can as a map person to help facilitate people looking for insights and, and hopefully suppressing this, this sort of thing. 
Great. Now, uh, once again, I want to put a reminder out there. We're going to have uh, the links to this map and the data sources that John has referenced within our show notes. Uh, this is going to be distributed with uh, through all the podcast networks on YouTube as well. Uh, thank you, John, for coming on and talking about the mapping hospital bed. Uh, uh, this this is uh, it's been a quick walkthrough, but very insightful of how you did it, and I'm very impressed of uh, how. Uh, well, you know, I was wondering where the Craigslist zoning data came from, and you answered the question right there, <laughs> and how they even get that, uh, the mystery behind it, basically. Um, it actually reminds me of the story I to told on, on our new segment a couple days ago regarding the Waffle House Index, which is oh, another yeah. fascinating um, data set. Uh, and actually, some mashup interesting way i'd almost love to see waffle house territories used alongside uh this data too you know yeah that uh, would be interesting uh but once again i want to thank you for joining us a quick quick answer the call on twitter just to pop on the show and talk about this it's been great thanks for the kind invitation i, I appreciate the opportunity well this has been john nelson with esri content team and uh i'm adam sims for project geospatial thanks everybody for listening